Hello team, it's Captain Wolfson, your shipyard commander. I wanted to talk to you about COVID-19 and our current efforts at PSNS and IMF. Thank you for your hard work and for remaining flexible as our conditions change to help us meet our mission. We continue our efforts to implement Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Guidance and ensure we are following all of the Department of Defense and Navy directives. We're gonna talk about three main efforts, protecting our people, maintaining mission readiness, and supporting the response effort. In our efforts to follow guidance and recommendations from the Navy, Department of Defense, and our partners at the state and local counties, we have implemented a number of measures over the last few weeks. These efforts include canceling events, reducing meetings and gatherings, along with increased cleaning, cleaning kits, and producing hand sanitizer. We've moved out with a sense of urgency to do our part to help flatten the curve here in the Northwest by individuals performing self-assessments before coming to work and by reducing the amount of people coming into the shipyard at one time. We quickly got more than 2,000 people out on telework and allowed close to 40 500 people at higher risk for complications from COVID-19 to take administrative leave. We also have teammates working alternative work schedules. I know that many of you have rearranged your lives in support of our mission to help with social distancing. Thank you for this. These efforts over the last couple of weeks have provided us, along with the base and the region, additional time to prepare and fully consider what we can do to help our teammates both here and at home. We have also had an opportunity to get better educated on the proper hygiene, to combat COVID-19, and what social distancing actually means and how to implement it. Amid this chaos, I am grateful for my family, my health, and my job. I'm grateful for the ability to serve our country and be part of something bigger than myself. It helps reassure me and provide a sense of purpose. We know how to maintain ships and ensure our Navy is ready to defend our nation. We are needed and we know how to do our jobs. It's a privilege to work in the defense industry and to have a role in mission critical work. While things aren't easy right now, we are very lucky, especially compared to many of our fellow Americans. I have always believed in taking care of our people, but I see that purpose now more than ever. We must take care of our people so that we can come back quicker and stronger. I've asked Rear Admiral Barnett, Commander Navy Region Northwest, to join me and tell us a bit more about their efforts and how we, they are working with our partners in the surrounding community as well. Admiral Barnett, thank you so much for coming to our shipyard. I know that you and our teams have been working so hard at all of our installations to ensure that we are minimizing the spread of COVID-19. Can you tell us more about what we're doing to protect our folks? Thank you for that and thank you for the opportunity. Um, that's a very good question. What I'll tell you is that the well-being of our workforce is my number one priority. The civilian sailors and the active duty sailors and their families. Uh, one key thing that we're trying to do better is our communication. Key to taking care of our sailors is communicating what we're seeing, is communicating internal to the installation, but also outside the fence line with our state and local authorities and also with the appropriate folks uh, back in D.C. and everybody in between. Mm, wow, that's a lot. So, and we really appreciate all of those efforts. Can you describe some of those health protection measures? We've been talking so much about health protection measures. Can you talk about that with us? Certainly, and we're doing a lot of things right now. Right now, we're in HP Con Charlie. Uh, but we're doing a lot of different things to make sure we're maintaining the appropriate social distancing. And as we try to actually um, 
flatten the curve. Everyone's heard that term, so we're trying to flatten the curve. So we're doing things like um, our VCC, our visitor, con our visitor control center. Uh, what we're doing with that is we're queuing up people a little bit differently. Uh, we're doing things with our CDC where we're adjusting some of the times and who and how we take care of our, of our folks. We're checking the uh, little kids when they come in mm -hmm. to make sure they, you know, and if they're well. Uh, we're doing things with our MWR. Some facilities we've actually closed down, but a lot of our food stuff uh, is still available, but it's for takeout only, and that's also for the galleys. So we're being innovative with things, and we're trying to come up with new ideas on how we can still work, because we do have an important mission here. Yeah, those are um, those are very significant actions, I would say. I, I agree. And so, um, from the efforts uh, that we're seeing, uh, I think I've, I think we've made progress. So, what about um, our future? W looking towards the future efforts that we're putting in place, can you talk to us a little bit about what our workforce would expect to see as we move forward and any future actions? Okay. Yes, and that's an another great question. HPCon Charlie, we're doing a lot of things, as I mentioned earlier, with HPCon. HPCon Charlie. Um, we are aligned with NORTHCOM, with uh, CNIC, with our state and local and our other government, uh, we know whether it's FEMA, uh, the tribal authorities on where we're at. I feel pretty comfortable with where we're at right now and what we're doing is actually having a good effect on trying to flatten that curve. Um, but if we need to go up, we do have that, you know, that opportunity or if that opportunity presents itself, I have the authority to do that. But I think we're in a good place right now. Uh, the communication uh, between us and between the other stakeholders is key to that. And a lot of the ideas or a lot of the measures that we're doing now, you guys came up with it and you passed it to us. So uh, key is communication and it's also running that up the chain uh, to make sure and that we're aligned with the whole of government effort. Yeah, and I, I think um, I think you can see a lot of the measures that we've been closely uh, working with you. You right. see some of the measures even as you walk into our turnstiles, for right. example, right. Um, every day. Right. So, uh, so what what can we do to help ourselves? even more. We've got to look at that from a future perspective, but then what else can we do to help our workforce and what, what efforts uh, can we assist with? Um, three things, be compassionate, uh, be patient, but most of all, be flexible. Uh, one of the more important things I would like to stress is if you're not feeling well, please stay home. Please stay home, use your questionnaire. Uh, I believe everyone knows about the four or five questions that we like to ask everybody on how you're feeling. Uh, if you're not feeling well, call your supervisor. Mm -hmm. uh, contact your medical, you know, your medical professional and say, hey, I'm not feeling well, stay at home uh, because uh, you can heal better at home and then we can get you back into the workforce. Uh, the other thing that I would ask is that uh, keep an eye on your shipmates. If you see someone who's not feeling well, because we're all pretty much type A personalities, we wanna come to work, we wanna, uh, do that mission and be done with it, you know, we can we can juggle and adjust some things so we can still get the mission done. Uh, our job is to take care of you, and um, that's what the installation is here for. So you're our customer. So let us know what we can do for that, but ask and that you also be patient with some of the folks who you may see, because uh, at the front gates, the ECPs may queue up on occasion and things like that. So uh, your patience and understanding is definitely uh, appreciated for that. Okay, thanks, Admiral. Uh, we really appreciate, I know our workforce does, you come in here to talk to us today, and uh, we look forward to working together. Thank you, ma'am, I appreciate you. Thanks. Our focus remains mission priority number one, the on-time delivery of our Navy's ships and submarines. Our mission to maintain the nation's nuclear ships and submarines is critical to our national security. In this era of great power competition, our aircraft carriers and submarines provide the decisive advantage over our adversaries. Retaining this advantage necessitates that our shipyards are fully operational and manned by a dedicated and experienced workforce, especially during periods of national crisis. Delays create a vulnerability and a ripple effect across our fleets, and we need to ensure we do all we can to support our sailors charged with protecting our North Star to preserve the fullest potential of liberty for those around us and those yet to come. As the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Mike Gilday said, 30% of our fleet is underway today, including four carrier strike groups and four amphibious ready groups. We must, to the greatest extent possible, practice social distancing as well as good hygiene and cleanliness about our ships, in our offices, and our homes. 
America continues to depend on us to provide national security and stability to this nation, and we will do just that. To that end, I invited Admiral Doug Perry, Commander, Submarine Group 9, to tell us just how important our efforts are. Hello, Admiral Perry. Hey, good morning, Diana. Thank Thanks you. for having me here today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today because we really want our workforce to know everything they do each and every day and how much it means to our troops. And so I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about, for example, what does our mission really mean? So mission readiness, you generate mission readiness with delivering a combat capable submarine. Mission readiness for us is defined as a trained and certified crew underway on a submerged and combat capable submarine. So for our, our eight Pacific ballistic missile submarines, it means they're able to execute their mission as the sea base leg of our strategic deterrent triad. In the case of our SSGNs, they are able to provide unprecedented strike and special operations capabilities to the combatant commanders throughout the Indo-Pacific and the globe. That's what mission readiness means. And our SSBNs continue to serve as the survival leg of the strategic deterrent forces, the backbone of our national security for over six decades. That's what your force provides. They are the most consistent and constant reminder to any and all of our adversaries that no benefit can be gained from any aggression against the United States or its allies. And now more than ever, as you have said, we must maintain a resilient, trained, and combat-ready SSBN and SSGN force to fulfill those Pacific and global missions. But here's the point, the wrench turning, the welding, the rewiring that your Puget Sound and Trident Refit Facility workers do every day, that's what delivers combat-ready platforms to my crews that we take to sea. And so, in that vein, my SSBN mission readiness de depends directly upon the effectiveness of your workforce here at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and at Trident Refit Facility. Thanks, Admiral. I think, uh, I think we will learn a lot from that. Uh, I also know that we've been working really hard, and you have been working really hard, to keep your sailors healthy and stop the spread of COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit more, more about your efforts? Yeah, absolutely. Similar to your teams, each of my submariners and my staff, they perform a daily self-assessment before they even go into the ship or the office. And that ensures that each of them are staying home if they and when they feel ill. We are cleaning our spaces on the ships in the office, increasing our social distancing by eliminating those low priority uh, meetings that can be postponed using teleconferencing and spreading our personnel out to limit the amount of people that are on any boat at any one time. And like your realignment to multiple work shifts, we're doing the same in our Trident training facilities and refit facilities in the office and on board the ship. We're screening our crew members. We're taking their temperature as, as they come on board the ship or in the office. And of course, we're all adhering to that same Washington state and local regulations that you are staying home, staying healthy, limiting our contact with others to only essential tasks. And to be complete, we're advising our family members to observe those CDC recommendations at home as well, to make every effort to keep our sailors and families healthy. Yeah. The situation does present lots of challenges, but it's absolutely necessary for our nation's health, priority one, and our mission readiness. We really appreciate those efforts. What else should our teams know? Yeah. Simply put, and this is kind of the, the key part, strategic deterrence and undersea warfare, they simply won't get done without my submarine sailors and your industrial workforce at PSNS and TRF and the health of their families. So I want the shipyard workforce, the TRF workforce to know in their hearts and in their minds that their individual effort and the team effort is what delivers capable nuclear-powered warships, the aircraft carriers and the submarines that the CNO calls out in his frago as the key 
combat forces that execute sea control, strategic deterrence, and maintain that key undersea superiority advantage that are so essential to our Indo-Pacific and global missions. The maintenance and upkeep that you perform makes that possible to meet these operational requirements. And we all have to continue the work to mitigate the risk of infection that exists. And only the way to accomplish that, this goal, is to continue to have trust in one another up and down the chain of command. So I really encourage that. Work with your supervisors up and down about balancing the work that we have charged to do to deliver combat ready uh, ships and the risk of spreading COVID. Thanks, Admiral. All right, we've been talking a lot about our efforts here in the shipyard to ensure we have the safest environment as possible. We have learned a lot over the last few weeks. We've canceled events, we've changed our meeting posture, we've started making hand sanitizer, cleaning kits, and we've increased the frequency of contracted cleanings. We've been on an education campaign to ensure we are doing the right things individually as well. This includes washing our hands, ensuring other strict hygiene practices, social distancing, and staying home if you aren't feeling well. It's our responsibility to ensure each other, our community, and our healthcare system. I've invited Captain Scott from Naval Hospital Bremerton here to discuss COVID-19 prevention. Captain Scott, thank you so much for coming. We have been looking forward to this visit because we have lots of questions. So first off, I think what our workforce would really like to know is how do we minimize the spread here in our industrial environment for COVID-19? Yes, ma'am, well, I am so glad you asked. Preventing the spread of the virus requires a total team effort. Each one of us must do our part, whether it is in our homes, in our community, within our cells. We want to battle collectively to defeat COVID-19. So here are some recommended actions that you can take. Self-assess, frequent hand washing, good hygiene, and social distancing. Mm. So those are great points, and I actually feel relieved that you're saying this because that is what we have been really focused on. We have been focused on self-assessing, screening, making sure that we understand it is imperative that we evaluate our health before we come to work. And so that has been really important for us. And so I think what some of our folks would also want to know is how do we help our community and especially our medical community? Yes, if you are sick, please stay home and contact your supervisor. This has been the recommendation even prior to COVID-19. We have now added that if you feel sick and you believe you have symptoms of COVID-19, please consult your healthcare provider or clinic by phone. For individuals without an underlying health condition, self-care at home will be sufficient in most cases of the flu and COVID-19. If you believe your symptoms are severe enough, that you need medical care, we do ask that you call ahead to your doctor's office, urgent care clinic, or the emergency department, and let them know that you believe you have symptoms of COVID-19 so they can take proper precautions. Today, we instituted a drive-through screening and triage process to determine the right course of care for individuals who present to the hospital. Based on CDC criteria, everyone, staff, patients, and visitors who arrive on base will go through the process, and that's considered to be a best practice across healthcare systems. It is important to keep in mind that not all patients who are screened will be tested. The drive-through process is a safe, efficient, and convenient approach to effectively assess the needs of individuals seeking care. This process will be opened from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Wow, that sounds like a great addition to our community in general, this drive-through. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works for us. Uh, and I also know that uh, you and your teams have been working very closely with everyone in our community and Kitsap, Kitsap County Public Health. Um, what more do we need to know? 
What more can you help us and tell us today? What more do we need to know? It is vital that we listen to the guidance being put out by health, public health departments and follow those recommendations. We strongly advocate for continued social distancing measures, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette, and increased hand washing, the frequency of cleaning as well as disinfecting surfaces, travel restrictions, only travel when you need to travel. These are the daily interventions that you can take which will help the medical professionals in their efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19 and ensure that we have a medically ready force prepared to support our continued national security mission. Wow, so this is, um, this is fantastic for us because I feel like we are our own best self-defense. Um, can, you, can you share a little bit more with us on, uh, you, you know, we talk about, you know, make sure we wash our hands, don't touch our face. What, what, what is the hazard of doing that? Yes, ma'am. As easy as it is to say, don't touch your face, we know it is very difficult to not touch our face. But one of the reasons why we do ask not to touch your face is because that's where our germs live. And so when we touch our face, we can touch our eyes, our nose, our mouth, making it more accessible for viruses or any bacteria um, to enter into the body. So it is really critical, again, strict hand washing, don't touch your face, clean the surfaces, maintain good social distancing, good cough etiquette, all of those things are so important to us preventing the spread of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are just absolutely great reminders and it's something that we have to keep present at all times. Gosh, thanks so much for visiting with us today. I know that our workforce appreciates this. I know some of our community members are gonna see this as well and it really is gonna help us out. Thank you for coming today. It's really appreciated, Captain Scott. You're welcome. Thank you. This is a true test for many of us. It is in difficult times that our true character is tested. The Secretary of the Navy, Thomas Modley, said it well. Our efforts are about character the character that is required to meet this challenge and the ever expanding challenges of our collective future. We have the right character. I do not take our mission lightly. Our Navy and our nation need us. We are aligning our COVID-19 efforts to our work and our mission. We must be focused on our resiliency for the long term. Please stay healthy and let's keep our minds grounded because we've got this. We are one mission, we are one team. Thank you.